are two apple trees today. And this one, the Grimes Golden, and the one next to it, the Arlington Mill. Grimes Golden, this tree is 12 years old now. Uh, planted in 2008, it's 2020. Grimes Gold is one of, it's an heirloom variety. It's one of the parents of Golden Delicious. I can't tell you how many times I've given one of those in a Golden Delicious to people. They tell them what it was. They have to take a bite out of each one. Which one they prefer. They don't tell them anything else. Every single time they like this one better. It's a little texture. It's a little juicier and a little bit sweeter. Most people comment on the texture. It's not as big as a Golden Delicious and not as pretty, but it's a lot better tasted. This is called a central leader. We've got a central leader going right up the middle, and we've spaced our branches out, our scaffold branches. We've spaced them out yeah, 10 to 16 inches, going all the way up. As this tree gets older and bigger, these lower limbs will come out. We do have a deer problem here. We have lots of deer around here, so... Um, it was a challenge even getting, I grew this from a whip, gra or a, a whip graft, about this big. Keeping deer out of these long enough to let them grow is a challenge. And now, as you can see, all this is what's at browsing height for deer. They don't have to reach up, they don't have to reach down, they'll just come through and they'll nip all these buds off. So as this tree gets older, we're training these branches to get higher. Ones like this will probably stay, but eventually these lower branches, they want to keep growing out. We'll eventually cut these off. This spacing here is a little crowded, but we're getting good fruit right now, so I'm going to leave that alone. So this is, again, central leader. There's also open style pruning. Usually for your peaches, cherries, things like that. Your apple trees. There's a debate, 50% will say open leader, or central leader, 50% will open vase shape. I'll show you an open vase. This over here is an open vase. This particular tree is a Michelin. Um, it's for cider. I'm sorry, Foxwell. It's a sharp apple for cider. Not an eating apple, but this tree, this tree's 13 years old. Not very big. Very problem with a lot of your heirloom trees. They have slow growers, prone to disease. But I love the apples. This particular tree just did not want to put out a good central leader. So I'm not going to fight it. We cut the central leader out. And we're opening up to get sunlight in, and that's helping it produce better. I found over the years when you're deciding how to prune your tree. Watch your tree, listen to your tree. Some varieties, they want to shoot a central leader straight up. They're very easy to work with. Others will fight you for years. Don't fight them, give in to them, do what they want to do. Just as long as you're getting sunlight and air, that's the important part. This tree's about four years old. I wanted to train a central leader. It would, didn't want anything to do with it. No matter what I did, it kept putting off side branches. So I said, okay, you win. I'm gonna open up the center and let you grow outwards like you want to. You're gonna get all kinds of sunlight and air and you're gonna produce fruit quicker. Same thing with this one. For whatever reason, the central leader on it got very crowded and tight in the middle and it went, some trees are prone to sending all their scaffolds straight up like a pear tree. So the way to get rid of that is I chose this one, open vase. Now this particular tree here, this is a central leader as we're training it to go up. This is, uh, this is Cortland. So let's watch your trees. Don't fight it. Don't try to force them one way or the other. A lot of it depends on your area, your space too. If you got a big open space, it doesn't hurt to open up the center. They'll grow outward got a small space keep them narrow growing straight up you're going to get more surface area for fruit production so it's all it's all up to the individual it's all up to your particular microclimate and your situation how much space you have so and sometimes it's up to the tree first thing I like to do is get what's called water sprouts 
Water sprouts are the ones that go straight up. They reach for the sky. They're called water sprouts. So I like to start in there. I just start looking at it. Anything that's pointing straight up or pointing back into the center of the tree, get rid of them first. Two things to remember. Once you make a cut, you can't put it back. But if you do make a cut you regret, the second thing to remember it is something will take its place. So if you make a cut and you say, oh, I shouldn't have done that, give it a couple years. It'll, it'll fill in. But um, so just take a look at it, decide what you want to do. And I'm going to get all the, uh, the water sprouts out right now. And anything growing, this is growing towards the center. This is growing up. We don't want those. Another thing you don't want to do, you don't want to, if you got a lot of spurs on a limb that you want to take out, but it's really loaded, it's going to produce good, you can always take it out next year, as long as it's not compromising something else. So see all these are pointing back in towards the center of the tree. We're going to take all these out. Now some people come in here and they'll just start, they'll just start snipping the big branches out. Um, I will too. I pretty much looked at this, decide what I'm going to do. But again, you don't have to be in a hurry. Just bring this stuff out. Look at it as you go. Decide what looks best. What's best for the tree. Air, sunlight. So, we're going to go around, hit some more of those. And we'll start working our way. This branch here, I left a year ago because it produced some fruit. It's continuing to grow inward. We really don't need that anymore, but what I can do, I'm going to let it go probably, I'll, I'll wait till I get everything else out. I'll probably let it go one more year because we're going to get some nice apples on there yet. The other thing, when it comes to pruning, when you're making a cut, this one will go. You've got a growth ring right here, a collar, growth collar. See where it gets real wrinkly right here? That's your growth ring. You don't want to cut into that. And I'm going to use one that we're probably going to take off. This one's probably going to come off anyway. So you don't want to do this. You don't want to get right up in there and cut against the wood like that. That will not heal properly. It'll take a lot longer to heal. You want to hit it where this growth ring is. Okay, if you hit just above that, that will create a callus right there and it'll heal over very quickly in one season. So I'll do another one to show you. Here's another one we're going to take out. There's your growth ring right there. Just above that. See, I didn't touch that. Now that growth ring, this, this year, because it's a small branch, that'll heal right over all the way around at the same time. The quicker you can seal these wounds, the less chance of disease. So again, don't make deep cuts right above your growth ring. You'll have a little stub kind of sticking out. That's what you want. Thing going up or in, and a lot of times, if you got a scaffold branch coming out, anything underneath too, that's going to get a lot of shade. It's not going to produce fruit, and it's taking energy from the rest of the tree. This is last year's growth. This is your scion. We discussed that in another video about collecting scion wood for grafting. That was last year's growth. You don't see any blossom spurs. This is the second year's growth. This was from two years ago. These are blossom spurs. This is the third year. You'll see more blossom spurs. Try not to break those off, and you definitely don't want to cut those. So um, applewood produces on three-year-old, on second-year wood, which means it takes three years. This was last year. This year, if we leave a terminal bud on there, it will produce spurs. 
the second year. This will be its second year. The third year, weather permitting, you're going to have blossoms open up. So apples produced the third year on third year wood. Just remember that. So again, when it comes to pruning, you're deciding what to take out. Here's a branch here. There's not a lot of spurs on that at all. And it's over top of this one. We want to open this canopy up a little bit here. We want sunlight and air to get down here. This has blossom spurs on it. These have blossom spurs, okay? We want it to grow out this way and get lots of sun. So we're going to take this branch out. Samurai pruning saw. Watch how easy this cuts. Again, here's your growth ring right here. Okay, we don't want to cut into that. We want to cut just behind it and we want to cut back at an angle. I'm not using any pressure at all. You don't want to use a lot of pressure. You don't want to rip through it real fast. You don't want to tear the bark. I'm not, I'm not using any pressure. I'm holding back on my limb so it doesn't fall. And there it is. Easy peasy. Now you got a nice, nice cut there. This ring, this will scar over. It'll take this one a couple years, a little bit bigger cut. But now see how we've opened this up? And as I said, we're training limbs at top to come out eventually. These are producing down the top ones are going to produce. We're going to open this one up too. This doesn't need to be here. Again, here's your growth ring. You see all the little wrinkles around there. That's going to heal this. That's your growth ring cut just in front of it. Just like that. For those of you wondering about covering these wounds, you can go out and you can buy tree wound, tree wound, uh, cover or salve, all it is is tar, it's black tar. I've used waxed, I've used tar to cover these up. More and more research is indicating, leave them open. Let the tree, this wound needs to dry out and it will heal naturally as long as you make the right cut. The tree's better off in the long run than covering it up. You're preventing it from healing the way it would naturally. So more and more research says leave them open. I've gone to leaving them open and uh, they're doing just fine. Here's an example here of a cut I made last year. Here's that growth ring it's starting to heal up around in about two more years. This will be completely covered over as this branch grows larger. Another thing to think about when you're pruning. Central leader, you want a Christmas tree shape. So if you come out here, when you're looking at your tree, when you start. Here's an example of a tree that I'm trying to train central leader. Now you can do things, you can force branches down because the more lateral your branches are, the sooner they produce fruit. You can tie a string on here, a piece of twine with milk jug with water. Just tie it like that for a season. It'll grow the way you want it to when they're young like this. I don't mess around with it. I got too many trees. I'm not going to put jugs all over and twine and deer getting tied and tangled up in them. So um, I'll let this go a couple of years. I did some grafts last year, some different varieties, but I'll probably end up cutting this out here and letting it come out in a vase shape. But if you look back here, you want your tree, when you start to prune, you want to envision a Christmas tree. You want to envision the top is small and it comes down the shape of a Christmas tree. It's going to give you the most light exposure. So you can see this one, that's what we're forming. We're forming a Christmas tree. Same thing with this tree over here. Same thing with this one. If you're going to train a small scale, a small branch, uh, scion from a year ago. As I said before, you have terminal buds on here. There's three kinds of wood in the tree. There's growth wood, there's fruiting wood, and there's dormant wood. 
They all serve a purpose. There's a lot of hormonal activity going on in trees. This is called a terminal bud. This bud tells this branch, this tree, I've done my job. It's time to fruit. So if you leave this go for another season, that's why you see some of these have longer branches. I'm doing that intentionally. You'll get fruit a lot quicker. You know that? There's a saying out there, one third of last year's growth when you're pruning. Well, I did that for years and it took a lot longer to get fruit because every year I went one third up and I trimmed every branch like that. Well, the minute you, when you take that terminal bud off, a different hormone happens or, or signal is sent. It's saying, I'm not done growing yet. I was damaged. The hormone saying it's time to fruit never makes it to the tree. So what happens? You cut this off, it'll start sending out more branches and start growing again. So you've just slowed down and you got a much smaller area that is gonna produce spurs. So I like to leave as many terminal buds on as I can, promotes these, promotes these blossom spurs. But if you are gonna trim one of these, if you're gonna trim one of these back, you wanna do it just below or above a bud at about a 45 degree angle, just like that, just above the bud. You don't want to do this because what's going to happen, this is going to grow out. That's going to become dead wood there, especially on a larger branch like this one right here. That's dead wood. That's where disease gets in. So when you're doing this, don't cut in between. Find, and, and it also helps in direction of your branch. If I want this branch to grow up this year, I'll prune it on top. That'll, wanna, that'll be more inclined to grow up like a water sprout. If I want it to keep coming this way, I'm going to prune it underneath. Just like that. That shoot's going to be more inclined to grow this way, straight out, rather than trying to grow up. Same thing if you're up here. If you want a branch to grow out this way, you're going to find a nice bud and cut it this way. Just like that. Now, that'll promote and continue coming out this way. If you prune it back here, this top one, that's going to go straight up. We've done our groundwork. We got the bottom scaffolds nice and clean. Lots of fruiting buds, blossom buds. We got it open. We got it nice and open. All our, any branches that are crossing are gone. Any branches pointing back in are gone. Everything on the bottom here is getting lots of sunlight now and it's getting air. It's important, not only just for fruit production, but you get those dews in the morning. When that sun comes out and the wind starts blowing, you want your leaves and your apples to dry off quickly because that's where disease can set in. The moisture sits on there for a long time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up. You can see here the tree's going, it wants to keep growing up, keep growing up. So what we're going to do is we're going to find branches that are coming out this way. We're going to cut the rest out. Same thing. The branches that are sweeping up, we're going to take them out. We're going to keep going with that Christmas tree effect. We're going to take extend a couple limbs out. I'm going to bring the ladder over to do that and I'll start thinning out the top. Could opt to use my pole pruners at this point. Usually I use this for fine work at the top. If it's a tree that's broad like this and hard to get into, I'll use this. So this will do up to about a one and a half inch branch. But we want to keep this one here. That's a nice branch. Uh, but we want to keep it coming out this way. So we're going to put a little branch tip sticking out there. We're going to take it off right there. And you can see on top, we got a little branch that's growing up, growing back in towards the middle. We're going to take that out. Now there's a branch above it. Here's one that's going to be hard to get to. If you work around the tree, you can get in there just like that. Get it in there close. Pull that out. We don't want that one growing so close. Now this one up here doesn't really belong. We've got a nice branch coming out here off of this one. We could trim it either way. This one probably eh, doesn't really need to be there. And it's got some damaged wood. Um, back in 2016, uh, we got hit hard. This area gets hit hard every 17 years by the 17 year cicada or 17 year locust. They do terrible damage. Um, when that happens, cut the dead wood out. Don't try to save it because it's just going to keep breaking over the years and you're going to get fruit on there and it's going to break because it's weak. So this, that's what happened here. That's damage from the 17 year locust. In 2016, 
2016. So we're just cutting all these small branches out. We don't need these, these water sprouts. And because that does have so much damage on it, it's just not grown or produced well. You're better off to take it out. I'm taking this one out. Another one here we don't want. It's growing up. It's shading the other branches out. It's competing with them. We're taking that one out. This tree's done. As you can see, we've got a Christmas tree shade. I've tapered it. Your younger branches on top, I've, I've scaled them back. I found branches that are going more lateral or horizontal than vertical, and we're going to train those. The top still has a central leader. This, this is an M111 rootstock. Actually, this is a M7 rootstock, so it's about as high as, as tall as it's going to get. If I chop off the top, it's going to want to send a whole bunch of growth up again, so I'm leaving that on there. And as those smaller branches develop and come out, I'll save a couple more of those, and as they grow out, eventually that top will come off. But for now, we leave the top on there with the small branches, small scaffold branches. It's not going to send up a bunch of water sprouts because I took that top off. So this one's done. Hopefully we have a good crop of apples. We'll come back and look at it this summer. So we got both our trees pruned now. This is the last up for this season. Again, Christmas tree shape, lower scaffolds, bell cover, upper scaffolds. trim it back this year to uh, strengthen these scaffold branches and produce more more spurs so if you have any questions please leave them in the comments section and uh, if you like what you see please share us with your friends thank you hey.